If you're watching later, leave a comment. Um, I do go back and read all of them. I try to remember to heart all of the comments that I read. Sometimes I forget, don't take it personally. But I do try and read everything and yeah. But sometimes YouTube won't show me all of the comments. Um, when they're posted and so I can't heart them right away, so. Hello, so just leave me comments for later if you're watching later. Have I checked my, Darcy, you're here, I've been waiting for you. I haven't opened it yet, I have been waiting for you. Should we open it right now? Should I go get it? I've been waiting for you. I'm so excited. Open it, okay, hold on, I'll be right back. Excuse the mess, but I'm reorganizing my kitchen. I need some scissors. Careful not to cut what's inside. Okay. Hold on. Whew, I need to sit down. Hold on. Whew. Let me take my meds real quick. Oh, good heavens. I'm so excited. You guys are so sweet. Thank you for whatever it is ahead of time. Sorry. Ew, look at my hair gross. Um. You're very sweet. Thank you. Um, Troni, thank you. Okay. All right. Careful. Not, I don't want to like show your address, so I'm so excited. Careful opening cut corner. Is that what that says? Cut the corner. Okay. Am I gonna cut it? Oh, sorry, I probably just showed your address. We're good. I started to cut it earlier and then I was like, no, I need to open this up. I don't think I got anything. That's beautiful. Did you draw this? What the heck? Did you make this? Did you draw this? That's beautiful. You can read and show on camera. I love, I love that you're giving me these instructions because I need it. Okay, Shani. I saw Colleen's show back in August. I gave Corey a letter all about you. I remember that. It was so sweet. And I got this for you. Go up for me. I have a silly fear of post offices, which explains the delay, lol. But also now I can give you one of my handmade Christmas cards. Oh, you did make this. Colleen held your gift in her hands. And I hope it makes you so, so happy. Love, Darcy. It's freaking me out a little. I'm gonna cry. Is this, are you serious? Why did you give me this? She gave me her playbill. 
Hill from going to see Colleen on Broadway and Colleen signed it? Are you kidding? I'm gonna cry. Why are you giving me this? I don't deserve that. Why are you giving me this? Why don't you keep this for you? Oh my gosh, thank you. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna cry. This is just, yeah, this is way better than a pony. Oh my hell. Look at, oh my gosh, I can look at like, oh, I can look at like the, ooh, like the bios and everything. See, that's something you can't find online. You know me so well, Darcy. I can't believe, you, I'm shaking. I can't believe you gave this to me. Oh my gosh. It, you got one too. Okay, that does make me feel better actually. <gasps> sweet of you oh my gosh wow <laughs> oh my gosh you watch Colleen say I need to tell Danny I wonder if he's asleep dang it I'm on my phone oh my gosh hold on I'm gonna grab Danny hold on <laughs> Wait, come sit down. Hold on. I want to hear your reaction to you. <laughs> okay, so let me read her letter to you, to me first. I'm like shaking. I saw Colleen's show back in August. She went to see Colleen on Broadway. Okay. Um, and I gave Corey a letter all about you, and I got, and Corey's her best friend, mm -hmm. and I got this for you. I have a silly fear of post office, which explains the delay, but also now I can give you one of my handmade Christmas cards. Isn't that awesome? She drew oh, that. Oh, that's cool. Good job. That's I'm amazing. Shaking. I like shaking. Um, Colleen held your gift in her hands, and I hope it makes you so, so happy. Are you ready for this? What? <laughs> wow, that's amazing. <laughs> that's so cool. And at first I was like, That's my signature. I know, and she held it. <laughs> And at first I was like, why did you give me your copy? She's like, don't worry, I got me one too. And I'm like, okay, that makes me feel better. Dude. Isn't that cool? That's awesome. You got an official piece of Colleen memorabilia. You can only get if you go see her on Broadway. I yeah. can't believe you got this for me. Thank you. Oh, wow, you're cool. You're I so cried, cool. like I started to well up inside. Aww. Isn't that awesome? That's amazing. Nice That's job. From Darcy. Huh? That's from Darcy. <clears throat> nice job, Darcy. Thank you. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. Can we frame it? I'm going to. I'm going to hang it right up there. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. My heart. <laughs> These people know me so well. Yeah, that is so sweet. I feel like I'm going to cry. <sighs> well. Yeah, can't beat that now. <laughs> Good luck, people. I don't know what it smells like, her. <laughs> Look, now I can read her bio, honey. Let's find it. That is... You know her bio, come on. No, but I don't know how it was written. And I want to know how they explained her. How they described her. It's Broadway. Her dream, where is it though? Why can't I find it? Oh. Colleen Ballinger, Dawn, is the creator and star of Netflix, the Netflix original series, Haters Back Off, and, Mir and Miranda Sings Live, You're Welcome. She has more than 20 million followers and 3.5 billion views on YouTube. She's a New York Times best-selling author and is currently on tour with her one-woman one show, Who Wants My Kid? 
um, love to Eric and sweet baby Flynn. That's really cute. That's awesome. Oh, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> anyway, I just had to show you that. We're framing this tomorrow. Like before I ruin it, cause I'll ruin it. Yeah. Oh my gosh, this is so cool. I'm speechless. I don't even know what to say. I don't even know what to say. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so um, I titled this Tell Me Your Woes or whatever because I wanna talk about you guys tonight. So um, I don't want this to get messy like, oh, she didn't pick my comment, she didn't pick my story because I'll do this again, okay? I wanna start uh, inviting you guys in more and making this more about you because you're the ones who have helped me build this channel. So you deserve some attention as well and I've gotten enough tension, <laughs> attention. So I wanna, so like if you ever see me title something like this, like tell me your woes or how are you or anything like that, that means the whole live stream I'm gonna try and make about you unless someone gives me the most awesome gift I've ever gotten, then it will be about me for the first 10 minutes. <laughs> but then, um, yeah, so I don't want this, again, please don't let this get messy, get be happy for whoever I choose tonight. I'm gonna try and do a few of you um, and just kind of tell me what you're going through and I'll spend like maybe 10 minutes talking to each one of you that I choose and then we'll do it again sometime. So I'm really sorry if I don't pick you tonight, but, um, but let's see how this goes and let's just all try and help each other when I'm helping someone else or when I'm trying to listen, there's not really much I can do, but I can listen and encourage and, and all that crap. Um, <laughs> but while I'm doing that, you should join in and you should help me and you should encourage whoever it is as well. So, all right, so send me your problems and here we go. And I will pick one. Yay. Uh -uh. While you're typing, I'll read you our fortunes we got last night, because we got Chinese last night. You will have good luck and overcome many hardships. And the only rose without a thorn is friendship. I really love that. All right, we're gonna start with Darcy, because duh, hello. Um, <laughs> my struggle lately is that I have a boyfriend. Why is that a struggle? And it's the first time I'm dating and we kiss. Is this your first kiss too, Darcy? And I get so anxious when when he touches me and I get so in my head and I just freeze. Honestly, that's so cute. <laughs> I know this feels like scary, but you gotta go through it your first time, you've got to. It will, when you fall in love with a person or even if you fall in like with a person, like they, they, like you for you most of the time. And if they don't, then they're not worth having in your life. So um, if they're gonna be someone who's gonna tear you down about things that you tear yourself down about, then they're not worth continuing the relationship. But if he's really sweet to you and kind and tells you that you're awesome and kisses you and loves on you and does all these sweet things, then he's a good guy and there's a reason that he wants to be with you. So don't take that away from him. I know I'm one to talk because hello, I can't every day I question like why the crap does my husband like my body? I have no idea, but he does. And how lucky am I that he does? And how lucky are you to have a boy that, that loves you like that and, and um, yeah, I've been through relationships where, um, where I love how I'm like talking about myself again. I'm just trying to give you examples. It's the only way I know how to help because I'm not a doctor. But um, the guy I dated right before Danny was a total dickwad, and um, he would he would kind of like validate every bad thought that I already had about myself, like about my body, about how stupid I was and how ditzy I was and how clumsy I was and how awkward I was and all these things. Um, so when Danny and I started dating, I was like, what is this feeling? Why, why does he like me? Why is he wanting to hold my hand without trying to jump me afterwards and force me into something? Why is he kissing me 
and respectfully stopping when I want to stop? Why is he holding my hand and telling me that he loves me and not using it in a manipulative way or to make me feel bad in some way? Like it was bizarre for me. It was the very first, you know, I, it was hard, but I'm just saying like, girl, okay, let me read what you're saying. Actually, you might've said something. Hold on. First kiss. Oh, cute. Um, he's a gift exchange. What does that mean? That's not a thing. Oh, shut up music. Oh my God. He's so freaking cute and amazing, and wow, I hate love. I told him about my mental health, and he's so sweet. Okay, see? Oh, you need kissing advice? Okay. Examples are helpful. Okay, good. I need to hear that. Okay. Okay, so what are you asking? Do you want kissing advice? My, my first thing that I would say is let it happen, girl. Live in the moment. Don't stress too much about it. If it doesn't turn into marriage someday, that's okay. Don't start stressing about that. That will just like rush. It'll make both of you feel rushed and it will make you feel like just enjoy whatever stage and whatever your moment that you're in. And when it comes to kissing, has this guy kissed a lot of girls? <clears throat> Are you his first two? Either way, kissing advice for the anxious soul. Has he kissed a lot of girls or are you his first? <clears throat> Not that that super duper matters, but it sort of could help to know. Um, I think, here's the thing, I don't wanna brag, but I've been told <laughs> that I'm a very good kisser by all of the boys that I've kissed. You're his first? Oh, you have nothing to worry about then. <laughs> nothing to worry about. He's not gonna know the difference. <laughs> I don't know, I just would, I just would, Put your heart into it. Like, when you kiss him, don't think about, oh, let's make our lips touch. Think about, like, let's, you know, let's join together somehow with our mouths to tell each other that we love each other inside of our souls until the birds fly over the rainbow and then you find the pot of gold at the end. That kind of kiss. And then, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Lick your lips always. Pucker as much as you can, but not too much because you don't want it to be tight. You know, so just kind of like, you're welcome. I know. It's just kind of, no, I don't do that. Go, don't like this. I'm good. Okay, don't ask me. I have terrible lips, but I am a good kisser. But I have really small lips, but I am a good kisser. So just relax your lips. Let them flow. And just be like, oh, I'm gonna let, like act like your lips are like really swollen or something. And so they're just kind of like relaxed and oh, and then you go into it. And like that. I personally am not a fan of tongue at all, unless TMI once in a while when I'm having sex. Other than that, I don't like tongue. I feel like most people don't like tongue, but I don't know. If you do like tongue and you want to try that, then you kiss and then you go, and you go, just kidding, that's not what you do. You go, you go. So like say this is mouth, okay. And that's how you French kiss. My advice, honestly, <laughs> this is the educating we need. My advice, honestly, thanks girl, thanks Angel, is, um, <laughs> is, turning into a different kind of channel. Oh, that's where my niche, 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 niche. Anyway, my advice <laughs> is if you haven't kissed him with your tongue yet, let him do it first. Because, well, 
It depends. Do you want to kiss with tongue? Do you like kissing with tongue? I guess you wouldn't know. Have you tried it yet? No, I don't even drink. That's the thing. I don't even drink. You want me to get my husband and have him do it? No. That would actually, we would be kicked off the internet for pornography if we did that. You're just gonna have to use your imagination. That's not gonna happen. Just pretend he's right here. Oh. <laughs> and if you have dentures, you take them out first, and then that gives you more room inside. So, get yourself some dentures, number one. Practice on your holes. And then, if you are interested in trying tongue, then do it. But be prepared, because the first time you kiss with your tongue is extremely aw awkward. At least it was for me and everyone I know. Because it's like, what do you do with your tongue in there? Do you wrap it around their tongue? What if they try and do the same thing? Then it kind of just goes like this. So like some, so like I'll go, it's like, here's my tongue, here's his, and I'll go in and I'll like try and like do that, but then he'll try and do it and then we awkwardly hit each, like I, I do not, I do not like kissing with tongue. I think it's weird, but a lot of people do. So give it a try, see if you like it. Um, if you guys have only pecked so far, then I wouldn't worry about that yet, but maybe it'll happen, and if it happens, let it happen. Let it all flow, and let it all go into the soles of your butthole, but not in your butthole if you don't want that, because that's not okay. Who else needs some advice? Anybody? You're welcome. This is like, I'm giving you, like, this is worth like $100, this live stream. You're welcome. I live in America. Where do you live, Troni? Um, okay, I'm seeing a couple. Okay, let's do page first. Whoa, trigger warning. Been in recovery for 2.5 years, but hit a wall. I'm absolutely terrified to be active or eat healthier because I was addicted to exercise and counting before, so I still feel constrained by Ed in a backwards weird way. I've come so far, but have so far to go in living freely. Any advice? Well, I'm not like the best person to ask on full recovery because I'm not there. But what I will say is this thing that I say always, which is don't give up as long as you're, you do everything in your power to fight, whatever it is, whatever stage you're in, even if you haven't had any behaviors and even if you're worried they're going to come back, then you still need to be fighting. You're probably going to have to be fighting for the rest of your life. All of us are. I truly believe that. And I, I might get like some, not hate, but I might get a lot of people that disagree but I personally feel that once you have an eating disordered brain, you always will. So it's something that we can't necessarily get rid of, but we can train our brains to not use that part of our brain, if that makes sense. Like we can put that in a box and set it aside and a trigger sometimes comes when someone knocks over the box and a little bit comes out and then a relapse comes when the whole box opens and everything flies out, but then you can always put all the stuff back in the box and close the box and set it aside and, and pay in attention to the more important boxes, if that makes sense. So don't give up and I believe in you and I know you can do it and I'm proud of you, Paige. Holy crap, dude. I am so proud of you for how far you've come. Um, 
I think that's awesome. And I'm glad that you're aware of these concerns because if you weren't, you probably would fall back into that. But since you're aware and you're being paranoid, rightfully so, that that might happen, then you're hopefully not gonna do it then, you know? Like, that's awesome. You're very self-aware. So take that and be like, you know what? It's gonna happen. I'm gonna be tempted to count calories. I'm gonna be tempted to over-exercise. I'm gonna be tempted to do all this and I, I'll be able to tell people it's, it's, it's for healthy reasons. I'm just exercising for health, but really you know what, why you're doing it. You know that you're obsessing over the numbers and the calories and the hours and whatever. So just, yeah. So just take it, take it easy on yourself, but keep fighting because you're a fighter and look what, where you've got so far. You're amazing. I'm proud of you. Okay. Where was Karina? She kept typing hers. Karina said, my struggle is standing up for myself and when I do, I don't know if I went over the top or not. How do we know when it's standing up for yourself and not just being a douche? I have a good example. I don't know because this is, this is where I'm struggling right now as well. Like, I feel like such a bitch whenever I do self-care. So self-care doesn't just mean like physically doing self-care or doing something that I like, but also like allowing myself to be strong and speak up for what I need and my needs and stuff. Like, I still struggle with that. I know what the answer is. The answer is that we all need to have self-love and not feel guilty about it and take care of ourselves first so that we can take care of other people. But it's hard. It's really hard. Oh, you have an example. Hold on. Where was your example? Today, a lady left her cart in the spot I was trying to park. I honked and nicely waved to ask if she would move it. She looked at me and opened her car and got in and shut the door. I honked loud and flipped her off. I screamed bad words. I felt really <laughs> good at my, my, uh, wait, where's the rest of it? I felt really, I felt bad, but really good at, where's the rest of your story? You know what? Did she know what you were trying to do? Like, was she doing it to be a brat to you? Like, did she see you and be like, mm -mm, and got in her car and left? Cause that's rude. I mean, I don't know if I would have like screamed and cussed at her, but to each their own, you handle it however you felt like you needed to handle it. At the same time, yes, she did. How rude. That's rude. Honestly, some it's going to come back around for her. She's going to go to the mall on Christmas Eve and be in like the biggest rush of her life and she's gonna find like the best parking spot in the world and somebody's gonna leave their cart in her spot and then she's not gonna be able to get into the mall and then she's not, and then by the time she finds a spot and walks two miles to get into the mall, she goes to the place to get that one item that she went there for and they're all gonna be sold out and the guy at the counter is gonna be like, yeah, we just sold out, we just sold out like five, like two minutes ago, like you just barely missed it. If you Only if you would have been here two minutes earlier then you would have made it and she would have been like dang it so full circle but always stand up for yourself how you want to do that that's up to you what trony um you do like honestly yeah she did hi Michaela Karma. Exactly. All right, who else? I love you too, Troni. Who else has a problem? How do you ignore a neighbor that's rude and doing everything to annoy us? Okay, I have a story recently. Oh my gosh, people already kind of hate me right now. I don't know if I should tell this. I'm pretty sure I'm that neighbor because, <laughs> and maybe you could try this because it did work. 
that's what, yeah, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna share this because you can do what my neighbor did and maybe that will work. Um, <laughs> okay, I feel bad, why am I laughing? I'm not, I don't think it's funny what I do, but it's funny what they did. Um, okay, so I live in a condo townhouse type thing and we're at the end of the row, but we are connected to one. We're on the corner, but we do have one next to us, and that one has two, on e one on either side, and so forth and so forth. I am a night owl. I'm up late all the time. I'm also deaf, not really, but like, I am I have a hard time hearing a lot very well, so I have to turn things up really loud. And I've always felt bad about it, and when we moved in here, um, I was like, holy crap, this place is huge and they're not going to hear us next door. Why would they hear us? There's like, cause the way this, the, these houses are set up is that the stairway, which is over there, it's mirrored. Oh, look at my kitchen. Wow. It's mirrored on the other side, which means there's that whole stairway, the whole wall, and then their stairway and then their walls and all that. So I'm like, oh, it's probably not a big deal. So the first year, two years year and a half maybe that we lived here, nothing. Like, and I was like, oh, and I never heard my neighbors either, ever, not once. Um, however, <laughs> recently I have been, you know, not, I've been on a crappy schedule again and I've been watching TV late at night and I feel so bad. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna throw up, I hate myself. Um, and I logged on to get my Wi-Fi turned on, to turn on my Wi-Fi. You know how it'll show up like different names of Wi-Fi's around you in the neighborhood? The Wi-Fi that was like had the strongest connection, which means it was right next door, they named it and they said, they called it, turn your effing TV down. <laughs> no. So they said the real F word though. That's what they named their Wi-Fi. <laughs> Turn your effing TV down. <laughs> so ever since then, I've been like being as quiet as I can. It's so, it, I felt so bad. Like I, like I always thought like, why is nobody complaining? Like maybe they really don't hear me. Maybe this is like the coolest townhouse that has like these really awesome insulated things because I never hear them and so obviously they never hear me but then and I was like oh my gosh I feel so bad I feel so bad I need to tell Danny that I forgot to tell him so anyway um you could try that you could try sending a message through your wi-fi <laughs> so you could be like stop annoying me stop coming like what are they doing to no wi-fi dang it okay well I don't know. That's just an example. Have you tried talking to them? And what are they doing to annoy you? Tell me like what they're doing. I'm a horrible person. I'm terrible. I'm going to go to hell. <sighs> yeah, I need to know what they're doing. And then I'll tell you what I think you should do. Because I know everything things. Loud music, talking loudly. Okay, have you tried talking to them yet? <coughs> like, have you physically gone over there and talked to them? There are two neighbors who sent Wi-Fi messages. One said, I can hear you having sex, and the other said, I can hear you whacking love to me. Is that real? <laughs> are you just making up stories, Tiffany? <laughs> oh. Moving furniture at 4.30. Are they next door to you? Are they above you? Where are they to you? Yeah, I like that. Leave a polite note on their mailbox. Like, where are they to you, though? And and have you tried talking to them yet? Yeah, leave it. I like that. Leave a note. Oh, they're above. Yeah, maybe just leave a note. And because, again, I've had experience there where um, we were in an apartment and we were on the top floor. And the people below us at the time, I was staying up till 8 a.m. Like, I would be up all night long. And Danny worked graveyard at the time. And so... And it was this little apartment and um, and the people below us, uh, I was outside getting mail in this sweet little lady because we don't talk to our neighbors. I'm not a big neighbor person. 
it makes me anxious, so I don't really know my neighbors, but this sweet lady walks up to me and she and she's a little bit older and she goes, she goes, hi, and I said, hi, and she goes, um, are you in whatever number our apartment was? I don't remember. I'm like, yeah, and she's like, oh, okay, well, um, I live below you, and I'm like, oh, good to meet you, okay, and she goes, um, I'm really old, and I have to get up really early for work, and sometimes your TV is really loud, and you're, like, stomping around, and moving things, and listening to music really loud, and, and screaming, and, and, and I'm like, I'm so sorry, like, she was the sweetest little muffin, um, so from that day on, every time we lived in an upper apartment, I would be quiet, and I would start listening to things with headphones and stuff, so that's how I learned that, and then this one I learned that even if they're next door, and even if they're like four walls in between you, they can still hear you. The moral of the story is don't be rude like me and freaking turn down your volumes. Okay. Um, there's no talking to this lady. She's doing it on purpose. Oh, she's doing it on purpose? Call your landlord. Do you guys have the same landlord? That's what you need to do. If she's doing this on purpose, then call your landlord. That's not your... That goes beyond that's like not that's very inappropriate says the girl that is rude to all of her neighbors but it's true he knows already what did he say what did he say when you told him he did he do anything about it honestly i would just jeez i would kill her with kindness like karina said leave a nice note on her mailbox leave Maybe you could even like make her some cookies and like extend an olive branch, if you will, an olive branch of cookies and leave a little note that says, hey, I know that it's been a little rocky or whatever, however you want to word that. I know it's, there's been some like tension between us, but just, just wondering if you could please work on this and I'll, you know, Maybe we can at least compromise or figure something out, but just know that it's um just just know that it's it's really kind of affecting everything because I can't sleep and that affects my whole day and my job and my life and everything. Maybe if you just approach and just kill her with kindness and make her a treat or something, um, that's what I would do. So try that. Try doing something like that where you uh, where you do something extra kind. He's not renewing her lease. This has been going on for years. Okay. Well then until she's gone, um, there's nothing you can do. If the landlord's not going to do anything, you can't do anything. I mean, you can always call the police, but it's up to you if you really want to go through that, um, process. Uh, cause I know that can get really messy and I would hate for it to turn into some sort of like court situation where you have to hire lawyers and waste all this money doing that so um yeah I just would kill her with kindness and see how that works try it and see what happens um how do I prepare for treatment I live I leave Friday you were saying before you're going inpatient right I did see that how do I there it is how do you prepare for for a long-term residential program I leave Friday for an eight month wow eight month faith faith-based program that's cool for eating disorders, mental health, and addiction. That's really cool. That's so cool. Where's, what's your faith? Like, what what religion is that from? I am scared and have no idea how to prepare. Any suggestions? Okay, I can't give you any advice about residential because I've never been inpatient before. But I think that's so cool that you're doing that, first of all. She harassed with the ash. So she'll be the bigger person and you'll be blessed for it. Again, karma. You'll, it'll come full circle and, and you'll be blessed for it. Um, Non-denominational Christian. Oh, cool. I don't know. I mean, I've never, I don't know about that part, but like, how cool is that that you're doing that? How cool that you're being brave enough and willing to do something so crazy and so scary to change your life. Like, of course it's going to be scary. I'm not going to sit here and be like, Oh, it's going to be easy. You'll be fine. No, it's going to be scary and it's going to be hard. And that's why it's going to be the thing that's the most worth it, probably. If you feel that that's what you need and you know that this is going to work for you and even 
like push your scared feelings aside, push your paranoia, push your negative stuff aside, do you feel like this is going to work for you? If so, and you put your whole heart, heart into it, I guarantee this is gonna be so worth it. You're gonna come out so strong and then you're gonna be able to help other people someday, big time. Like even more than I can, because I can't help a lot of people because I haven't been, did I leave that glue gun plugged in all night? Because I smell, oh my gosh, let me leave it. <gasps> Do not tell Danny. Oh, he's gonna kill me. Um, I forget what I was saying. What was I saying? I don't know. Yeah, it'll be scary spice. I'm scared to be away from my husband for that long as he is my main support. See, you're a lot braver than I am. I, I haven't gone in because I, I know for, I just know that it wouldn't work for me, that setting, but this is different. I, like a faith-based thing, that sounds really, really cool. I'm kind of interested in hearing about that, to be honest. Maybe you could message me or something. Well, you're going impatient, so you can't message me after that, but maybe just send me like the website of wherever you're going, because I'm very curious about this now. Because um, I've thought about doing something faith-based. I feel that's something that would actually help me, as opposed to going to a treatment center with, you know, young skinny girls that I'm gonna just compare myself to and try and get tips from. Like, that's the reason I'm not going in. So don't abuse this situation. Don't don't use it and take every, I mean, use this, use it. Take advantage of this situation. Learn as much as you can, focus on yourself and not the other people that are there. Of course, you should make friends and stuff, but don't compare, don't give in to what Ed wants you to do while you're there. Just really take advantage of it because this stuff is expensive, I'm sure, and um, you are leaving your husband for eight months, and so take advantage of it. Make him proud, do it for him, do it for you, of course, but on the days where you don't even wanna do it for you, do it for him, and how happy he's gonna be when you complete it and you come home and he's gonna give you the biggest hug and he'll be so proud of you, and then you guys can move on with your lives and build a better life with each other, and, and yeah, so, I don't really have advice other than put your whole heart into it. Make sure that you're putting everything that you can into it um, that you know is good, even if it's hard, especially if it's hard. Um, but yeah, I'm proud of you. I, I've never been brave enough to go impatient, um, but I love this whole idea of the faith thing. So please send me that information if you could. Yeah, use your time healing, don't fight it, exactly. Because how many opportunities are you gonna get like this? I mean, if, um, what was I just gonna say? I got, what well, my brain just stopped. Oh, it was probably really expensive, and even if not, that's a lot of time to invest. That's almost a year, eight months. Um, don't let it go to waste. You don't want to have to do it all over again. What if it doesn't, if you don't take in what you need to from it and then you go home and you are you didn't take enough advantage and so maybe you fall again and then you'll have to go back. Like, really take advantage of it. I wish I would have done that when I was in therapy. I've never been impatient, but I have been in therapy and I was in therapy for about 15 years and for those 15 years I bullshitted my way through the entire thing completely bullshit my way through it because I didn't care, I didn't want to try, I wasted thousands of dollars of my parents' money. They paid for therapy for 15 years for me and I wasted it and I feel guilty for that and man, right now, like we have no money and I am i don't know how I'm going to get therapy right now but I would give anything to have therapy right now. So take advantage of it and um, yeah, yes, I do live in Utah. Um, okay, and let me know how it goes, okay? I'll be praying for you, girl. Let's see. Um.
Yeah, Christina, what happened? Shani may I ask for a prayer request for my Nona. What happened, Nona? I'm liking these lives better. I kind of like talking about you guys more than I like talking about me. And, but I'm still talking about me. I think this is cool. It's a good way to communicate. Yes, I live in Utah, Troni. Um, can I do you, Hayden? Sure, go ahead. Okay, while I'm... That's, that's a good point, Paige. It wasn't a waste. Sometimes you need to go through those rough times in therapy to realize that it's exactly what you needed all along. That's true. That's true. I wouldn't have learned how badly I do want it. And you, that's so true. It's up there. Okay, hold on. Um, hang on, guys. I need to do Hayden. And then I'll be right back. Hold on. <laughs> Where are you so I can do you? And yes, Christina, I'm praying for your, your Nona. Let me know what happened. Okay. Um, Hayden said, my problem is I actually got the confidence to DM this guy I have a crush on from TikTok, and he didn't respond yet, but it's been a while since my last relationship, so I'm scared of rejection. Who, like a guy that you know or like a famous guy? What do you mean? I don't know anything about TikTok. I'm too old. You live in Utah too? Where in Utah do you live, Troni? Um, I'm so naughty. Hello. Yeah. Okay. You got this, Serena. I'm really, really proud of you for doing this. No, he's just there. I've never met him. So you're saying that you're afraid of him rejecting you or just rejection in the north side? Where in the north side, Troni? Like what, like what city do you live in? No, he's just there. I've never met him. So is that what you're saying? You're afraid that, um, yeah, Tiffany's been through this a lot recently. Hayden, I have the same problem too. I've been hurting so much that I'm now terrified of getting hurt again, especially after the last time. Yeah. Yeah. That's so hard. It sucks what life, yes, you're scared of rejection. Have you been rejected before? Is that why? Why are you so scared of it? I'd like to remind anyone who's new that I'm not a therapist or a doctor, but I've been in therapy for most of my life and I've learned a lot and didn't start applying it to myself till recently, but I do know a lot of things, but I'm not a professional, so don't quote me. Salt Lake City? What part of Salt Lake City? That's really broad. Like, what's your... Because I don't know if I believe you, Troni. Um... Honestly, you live in a big, big house in Salt Lake City, okay. It's tan, okay. I don't believe you, Troni, but this is really um, um, amusing to me. Uh, no, I never reach out to people I like, but I've always had fear. Oh, okay, so this is new for you to even reach out. Okay, aw, well, good for you. Hello, Hayden. And do you know what? If this guy never answers you, who gives a fuck? Like, there are other people and I I feel like you putting yourself out there is going to it I don't know if it will work with this guy, but you're starting you are starting um a new like part of yourself, like a new journey almost where you're being brave now and you're putting yourself out there whereas before you just you hide all day, you hide from everything, you hide from love. And relationships and so this is the beginning of that so even if it doesn't work out with this specific guy you were brave enough to start your journey of reaching outward and going out of your comfort zone and you're always gonna look back on this and be like that was the very first time that I got brave enough to 
put myself out there. And so, and so I just think that that's awesome that you did that. So just, yeah, I just wouldn't, I just wouldn't put too much into this guy until he responds. If he responds, if he doesn't at all, if he still doesn't respond in like a couple days, I honestly, I mean, you could try messaging him again if you want, but I, I don't know. You deserve somebody who's going to like talk to you, you know, and if he's not going to do that, then he's not worth your time, but it's not a waste of time or anything because you've learned that you're strong enough and brave enough to actually do it. You know what I mean? It has Valentine's stuff in front of the... Oh, okay. Yes, I know exactly what you're talking about, Troni. Yes, yours is the tan house in Salt Lake City, Utah with the Valentine's stuff on the front and you promised me. And have I seen your dog who ran away? Yes. Um, just the French poodle of the that had the red collar, yes, I just saw it run through my neighborhood because Utah is this small. So if you live in Salt Lake City in the tan house with the Valentine stuff on your porch, then obviously your dog would run away and come to my neighborhood, which is really far away from that, and come in to my door. So yes, I have it here waiting for you. Okay, so just don't get paid in is my point and learn from everything that's going to happen on this new journey of yours And I'm very proud of you. I know how hard that is for you. So I'm very very proud of you Okay, um Kai Kai. Yes, I can answer yours. I saw it earlier. Hold on I love hearing about your lives. We need to do this more often. Okay, um how do I exercise and eat well without moving into obsessive thoughts? Like, what if it's just another way for me to be giving into the eating disorder, but I don't know it because it's all technically healthy habits. That's exactly what happened to me, so be careful. Um, I was dying and <laughs> literally, um, like it was at the time when my, one of the times where I was binging purging 10 times a day and I got so sick that I was passing out probably five or six times a day. And that's when we decided to move in with my mom. And so we moved in and she tried to help me stop purging. And I did, I stopped purging, but they had a gym in their house and I started over exercising and obsessing over food and calories. And just like what we were talking about before, like just be very aware of what's going on. If you feel yourself falling into I'm doing this for eating disorder reasons versus I'm doing this for health reasons. You need to be honest with yourself enough to be like, I'm not going to fall into that because I cannot, my body cannot afford to have one more type of eating disorder or to have any eating disorder come up again. So just be aware, I guess. I don't know. And I lied to people. I lied so hard. I was like, oh my gosh, I haven't purged in so long and all better and everything's great and I've been exercising so I feel better and I've been eating healthier all of that's the truth right I was exercising I was eating healthy but I was exercising for hours a day and then I was eating healthy food in very little calories so like I was eating vegetables but only vegetables and once in a while fruit and stuff like that so it wasn't a lie that I was like, I'm eating healthy things and I'm exercising because I started to lose weight when I stopped purging because I always lose weight when I stop purging. And then also add on the exercise and what I was eating. So um, just be careful. Ed will get in your head and convince you that you're healthy, even though we all know it's not healthy. So just be careful and aware and don't let yourself fall into that. Um, Love you too, Troni. Look forward to meeting you. <laughs> um, it's just scary because I know how easy it is and I don't want to realize things too late. Exactly, you know? Yep. I went vegan and lost all this weight and I feel like people expect a happy vegan lifestyle. Yeah. I mean, I... 
wait, hold on. I went vegan and lost all this weight and I feel like people expect a happy vegan lifestyle. Okay, are you saying that you're still vegan and that you still wanna be vegan? If you're being vegan for the right reasons, good for you to each their own. I personally can't do it because I've tried doing it and it turns into an eating disorder every time for me personally. So just be careful of that. Any diet does, not just veganism. It can be vegetarianism, it can be the keto diet, it can be the, it doesn't even matter. Like no matter what it is, it can turn into that. You know what I mean? Watch Jessica the prankster. Is that you, Troni? Because you're pranking me? <laughs> um, do you know what I mean? Yeah, so like, are you still vegan? What do you mean? Like, be a little more specific. How long have you lived in Utah, Troni? Hurry, get your Google out. I have a whole bunch of questions. Get your Google ready. Are you ready? <laughs> uh, hang on, I'm waiting for her to answer that and then I'll finish with her and then I think I'll do one more. Oh, you've only lived here three months. Okay, so you probably won't know a lot about it. That's really convenient. Okay, what made you move to Salt Lake City? I'm still vegan. I went vegan for animals and environmental. Okay, good. Well, that's good then. Then do it for that and do not let that turn into an eating disorder because that happens more than you know. People just don't want to say that out loud because they don't want to put, they don't want to make veganism look bad. Um, but I don't think of it that way. I don't think that veganism is bad. I just think that if you use it for eating disorder purposes, then it's bad. You know what I mean? Um, so as long as you're not doing that, just, you know what to do, Kai Kai. Just like be very aware what's going on with your body and your environment and everything and make sure that you don't fall into another one of Ed's traps. And if you even start to feel like you're even starting to, stop before it gets too hard, you know, like me. I mean, it's not too hard. I can get over this and I, and I will, but it's something that I waited way too long to start getting help. Um, so the longer you wait, the harder it gets, but yeah, I've lived in Utah my whole life, except for one year I lived in Vegas. Other than that, I've lived, oh, to see your family. Okay. So are you for real then? You really do live here? Um, Jasmine. Yes, I can do you next. Okay. Hold on. Jasmine. Where are you? Jazzy, jazzy man. Jasmine, jazzy man. There you are. I have recently become more open about my mental health and self-harm habits to my parents. Good for you. This has made me feel vul vulnerable and uncomfortable. Yep, mm -hmm. I want things to go back to normal. Any advice? Okay, they're not gonna go back to normal. If, I, I don't know what you mean by normal, but it's not going to. Um, things are different and that's because you have mental illness and that's okay. That's not your fault. It's not their fault. Um, mental illness is a very hard thing to deal with and it changes your life. It affects every part of your life. So why wouldn't it change your life? I would rather you feel awkward and uncomfortable around your parents now that they know what you're going through than to not have told them and have something really scary happen to you and they don't know how to help you because they didn't know that you were struggling at all. So like for instance, with me, when I lived with my mom, um, if Danny was gone and I lived in her basement, uh, she would come and check on me every day to make sure I didn't pass out because she was aware that that happens to me a lot or it did at the time. Um, so she would come down and check on me because she knew I'm prone to passing out. She knew that I was self-harming and that I was purging and that I had accidentally swallowed a toothbrush and she knew all that stuff. And if she hadn't known that, she wouldn't have been able to check on me. And there was a time where Danny was gone and I passed out in my hallway and I have no idea how long I was out. I don't, we don't even know still to this day. And if she hadn't have, if she hadn't come down to check on me, then who knows what would have, could have happened. 
I could have swallowed my tongue. I could have, I don't know what could have happened, but that's really a scary thought, right? So it's kind of the same with any mental health. If your parents know what's going on, then they know what to look out for to protect you. So it's like you've got more people on your side. So don't look at it as, oh my gosh, I'm so embarrassed that my parents know this and it was hard for me to tell them and now things are awkward and things are uncomfortable and I feel vulnerable. Look at it as, I'm glad that the people I care about the most know what I'm going through in case something happens. Like you could, you could um, overdose on something because you're suicidal that day or something and you could overdose and then they take you to the hospital because all they see is that your mouth is foaming and that's it. But they don't know to think, oh, could she have overdosed or whatever. And those moments, those precious sec seconds could save your life. If they're, they can go in and be like, my daughter struggles with mental health. So I'm concerned that this is an overdose or something. You know what I mean? So it's always better that they know, even though it's very uncomfortable and it's very vulnerable. Um, but it's awesome of you that you told them. That is so, so, so cool. So cool. You should be proud of yourself because that's the hardest thing that you can do as far as like letting, like letting people into your mental illness world is a scary thing because you don't want them to see it. You don't want them to have to deal with it or see what it does to you because um, you love them and you care about them, but they love you and they care about you. And the more they know about what you're going through, no matter what it is, the more they can help you. So allow them to help you. Does that make sense? Are you still here? Because you're not commenting. Where are you? Right, exactly, Tiff. Things won't be back to normal again, but they will get better and you'll feel more comfortable talking to them about it eventually. Exactly. And who knows, someday you could take it further and you could be talking to 90,000 people every day about mental health. Who knows? Because I was once where you were. I was terrified for my family to know about what everything that I was going through. But once I told my mom, again, when we were living with her, she would, um, she would, like, I'm trying to think of an example. Oh, there was this one time where, um, my parents have had a hot tub at the house that we lived with them. And um, at the time I was self-harming and I was cutting my legs. I always cut my legs because nobody ever sees my legs. Like I cut my upper legs because even when I go swimming and stuff, um, I usually wear like shorts or a short skirt over my swimsuit or something. So I cut my upper legs because I don't want people to see. But there was this time when uh, we got in hot tub and I had cut and I had a huge bandage on my upper thigh and, and I thought my skirt was covering it but my mom saw it and and she's like what's going on and do you, do we need to get you back in therapy are you okay I don't want you hurting yourself I love you like she was so sweet and tender and got me the help I needed again and, and so she's like okay let's go back to therapy again and we'll pay for it and you know like I'll Different parents have different ways of helping their children, but I would hope that I know actually in the long run it's better that they know what you're going through than to not because it literally could save your life one day. You never know. I could have gotten an infection with that cut if my mom hadn't have noticed or if Danny hadn't have noticed. It could have gotten infected because I didn't care enough to clean it. So what if it got infected and then got into my bloodstream and killed me? You never know. I can see you, Troni. Um, yeah, this helps me make more sense of the situation. Thank you. Okay, good. Just feel confident and yeah, just let them in, okay? Just let them in because they're there for you. They love you. Okay, I'm going to take one more and then I'll go. So everyone send in your problem and I'll pick one. And please don't be mad if I don't pick you because I'll do this again, because I'm really enjoying this. I'm enjoying putting the focus on you guys and helping you in a way that I can help, which isn't much, but it's something. And that's all I want for you guys. So this was really cool. Why do you keep saying my name? 
understand what you're doing. Okay, send in your problem. Okay, Troni, I'm not gonna address you anymore. If you say my name one more time, I'm not kidding. Ready, go. Tiffany's not scary, she's the best. <laughs> you have mice, oh my gosh. Glue traps, in my opinion, are the best. They catch them the easiest, they're not messy, but then I always have, this won't count as my last question because it's a quick one, but I always have Danny, this is terrible, I'm sorry animal lovers, I love animals too, but um, but mice carry diseases, they're very dangerous. It's not, it's not okay to have them in your home. And we live right next to a field, so we get like field mice all the time. And we lay out the glue traps that are like mostly for spiders, but also whatever things, Hannah. Um, and so we like to catch them on the glue trap, but I will like wait where I know it's gonna be and I'll check as soon as I possibly can because I don't want them to suffer. So I know this is terrible, but I have Danny go and shoot them in the head so that they don't suffer because there's no getting them off the glue traps. It's, it works the best, it's the cleanest for your house. Like the snaps are like splash blood everywhere and stuff. Um, and so I always like tell it goodbye and tell it that I'm sorry and that I love it and that it can be go, go be with Jesus and probably feel better because it's probably diseased and so I love you and goodbye and then Danny shoots it which sucks I know how sad that is but you got to do what you got to do especially with this um what's the word oh my gosh I have a really bad what is that called what is that called immune system I have a really bad immune system You're welcome, Paige, I love you. All right, anybody else? No one's really saying anything. Are we good? Nobody else? Wait, I see one. Oh, that's a good one. Zev said, I'm about to tell my therapist about my eating disorder behaviors for the first time. What should I expect? Well, if it's a good therapist, which I'm sure it is, most of them are. Um, they're not, okay. Every time I've told a therapist, they've always been extremely understanding. And they'll say things like, they don't say things like, um, how much weight have you lost? And, and what size clothes do you wear? And like, they don't focus, they focus on your health. And so they say, how long has this been going on? Which behaviors are you doing? Um, is this something that you feel controls your life? Um, how often are you doing behaviors? How often do you think about food? Like they're gonna ask you specific questions like that so that they can kind of figure out what level you're at as far as your eating disorder goes and so that they can help you the best, you know? Um, so just be prepared for them to ask you those things, but they will do it in a kind, uh, open manner and they won't push you. If there's something you're not ready to answer yet, then tell them that and they will respect it. They'll say, okay, whenever you're ready. Um, a lot of them, if they're super nice, will preface their questions and be like, you don't have to answer this right now. You could just think about it and let me know whenever you're ready, but this is my question, da, da, da. So um, I wouldn't be scared is the point. Therapists are highly trained and highly paid. And so they wanna do a good job and they do do a good job, and they have a really hard job, but they chose to do it for a reason. They chose to do it to help people, and some of them to make money too. I'm sure it's good money, whatever, that's fine. But they're there to care, and they're there to truly help, not judge or anything like that. Yeah, they ignore the eating story, focus on you. So like the, their main focus is what do you need? What's it doing to your body? How is it affecting your life? How is it affecting your job, your family, your body, everything? Like that's what they're gonna look to fix. So they'll ask any question that would have to do with that. And then they'll assess where you're at and then um, treat you appropriately. You know what I mean? 
So like you might get, your therapist might say, I think you need inpatient treatment. Who knows? They might say, I think you need extensive outpatient. They might say, I want you to come and see me twice a week instead of once a week or whatever. You never know. But they're going to just trust them to do their job. Um, that's what my therapist did when it was, when I was at my worst, my very, very worst. Um, and I would, I wouldn't like, like, I don't know if I would lie, but I would dodge a lot. Like I just really bullshit my way through the whole thing. Um, I forget why I was, what I was about to say. Crap. Oh, but I did at least tell her where I was eating disorder wise. And, um, so there have been several times where when I would get really bad with my eating disorder, she would say, okay, I want to see you two to three times a week now. And that's what I had to do until I was a little bit more stable that I could only, that I only needed to see her once a week or whatever. So I just think that it's great that you're doing this. That's really brave. I know how scary it is the first time, but just know that they know more about it than you probably think they do um, because it's more common than people think it is. And people just don't talk about it outside of therapy, but it is. They're going to get it. They'll understand. Yeah. So you'll do great. And I'm very, very proud of you. Let, let me know how it goes. Okay. I really want to stay, but I should go to bed. This was really fun. We should do this again. Should we do this again? Um, I like doing this, kind of connecting with you like this and sharing my experience and hopefully having it help you. I think that's awesome. So let's try this again sometime, maybe tomorrow. We'll see, see how I feel. But thanks for chatting and I love you guys and I will see you tomorrow for something. And remember forever and always that you're beautiful, you're worth it, and I am too. I love you guys. Bye.